Thanksgiving dinner. We probably haven't even fully digested all of the food that we've consumed, and uh, we've raced out to get ready for Christmas, and then we come to church and we're told we are in the beginning of a new, deep, and holy season. What do we do with it? This is the season of Advent, and Advent, when I was growing up, stood as an affront to everything taking place outside the church doors. Everybody's getting ready for Christmas, they're decorating, uh, everybody's singing carols, and you get to church and the priest tells you, stop. And the only sort of joyful thing was that we got to light the candle every week, but it felt a lot like Lent. I don't know if, if, if many of you grew, grew up in the similar tradition where uh, it really had a sense of waiting, but it was, it was more of a penitential waiting. And there is that part of our, our Lenten, uh, our Advent uh, theme that is preparing ourselves. But I think it's a different kind of waiting. And over time, we've started to shift that a little bit more uh, towards what we're really doing. This isn't uh, like that waiting with incredible foreboding. Uh, I've been several years uh, behind on my medical appointments. Uh, I, my last year in Louisville, I figured I'd take care of it once I moved to a new place. And then when I got to a new place, I'd find a doctor. And then a couple years later passed. You know, so I, now I'm getting all of these checkups. And they go and they run these tests. And you have to wait like nine or ten days. And uh, you wait there when they get to day 11. And you figure they haven't called because they don't want to give you the bad news. Uh, <clears throat> luckily, it hasn't been any bad news. But, uh, but you do have that foreboding. But I think we wait with expectant joy. And that's different than participating in the joy already. But it is about anticipating joy. It's about preparing ourselves for something beyond what we can even expect to happen. It's about believing that God is at the helm and that God will act. And we kind of go through Advent with bifocals. Probably with trifocals, but I'll only hit on two of them today. We prepare for Christmas Day. And we know that Christ was already born. Uh, we know the story. We can probably even recite that verse from Luke that's in peanuts off the top of our head. Uh, but we're waiting to see how Christ can be born again in our hearts. How can that story and the way that we prepare our lives and meet that story lead, lead to transformation? And that's an important part of the journey. But there's another theme that us as Episcopalians struggle with, uh, and largely because it's entirely out of our control, and we don't like that if we were honest with ourselves. We really don't like to leave things entirely outside of our control, but that's the idea that we hit on today, that God will act, that God will act decisively again, and there is nothing that we can do to, uh, to push the date forward or to pull the date backwards. We have no idea. The Bible says several times we will have no idea when it will happen. But part of our faith is that God will act definitively. And we wait on God. And while we maybe only put aside four weeks for it, it's more of a way of being that we need to get deep within our core, that we as Christians bring something to the table that the rest of the world doesn't always have, especially amidst the chaos of the times in which we live. We bring hope. We believe in a God who, when the world gets as muddy and as murky and as confusing, we believe that that is when God is preparing to act. And that pulls us through, and that's something that we can shine into the world. And we have this Sunday, where we focus exactly on that, on the promise that God will come again. And we're not very good with waiting. And so I think that's another piece of this season that we really need to, to breathe deeply uh, and celebrate, is that it isn't already here. Is that part of our waiting is just being still enough and opening our eyes wide enough to see God. And as a parent, it's one of the things that I think it's important Imperative that we teach our children, and I struggle with it. As soon as my, my daughter falls down when she was a little, little kid, I'd want to pick her right back up and scrape and, and clean up her knee and make her feel better. But part of that waiting, the waiting so that we can help ourselves, the waiting for God, but part of that waiting for something to happen is critical. And so we have this time. So it's not a, a joy kill that everything outside these doors uh, is wrong as people are celebrating and they're singing and they're filled with Christmas joy. It's that we need to not lose track of the fact that this is a time of anticipation. This is a time of preparing our eyes to see God acting in a new and creative way. 
It's a time for us to live into what we prayed during that first lighting of the candle before we get John the Baptist telling us what our work marching orders are about what God wants of us. We have to take a time just to listen, just to open our eyes wide. And believe that the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of mercy, the God of love will act. And I love the way we, we prefaced our service today. The coming of Christ. Because it speaks of a deep truth, Christ is coming. Christ is always coming. Always entering a troubled world. A wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, for the well-being of all creation. Remember, as I talked over the last couple of weeks, when we get to this apocalyptic uh, literature, when, uh, when we hear of these incredible storms and the famines and the, the fighting and all of the chaos, that isn't just a, 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 a vision of something beyond what's happening now. That's exactly what the person who writes this is experiencing. However metaphorical it might be, it feels that way. To the person writing this, the world is already shaken on its side. This isn't an indicator of these five things must happen before God acts. This is the promise that God always acts amidst the chaos and amidst the, the turmoil. And, but the problem is, if we were to be honest with ourselves, when the world seems most upside down, we sometimes pull away from God. We say, God, why didn't you act? We lose some confidence in God's decisiveness. And if God, if you were all powerful, why would you let these things happen? Why would you let the news be what the news is out there? And we stop focusing. I talked to a mediator and we we're talking about uh, when marriages, which is the same for churches or anything else, when chaos ensues, when there's hardship, we stop listening to one another. We stop looking at one another and, and seeing uh, one another's attempts to, uh, to act towards the other. And then when we finally get to the other side of it, uh, we've done a lot of damage. So God reminds us, especially, especially when the world seems chaotic, trust in the story. Trust in the God who broke into the darkness and shined a great light. The God who always is in the story of redemption and healing. J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote you know, uh, uh, quite a bit of fantasy, talked about the plot of every great fantasy novel paralleling the Gospels. And he says it's because that story, that incredible story of redemption and healing, of conflict giving way to resolution and hope, speaks of an innate truth. And that every great work of literature, every fantastic work of literature starts with the fantastical story of the gospel. So while the images today may seem so far from reality, he asserts that they are pivotal to our understanding what is true, what is real, and for setting our lens upon a God who's always in the work of doing what is fantastical, what is beyond our imagination of taking broken things and healing them, taking darkness and shining light, taking the parts of this world that seem so far from redemption and making them whole. So as we prepare for Christmas, do so with joy and excitement, but do so with eyes wide open and your lens set to see God, to see hope, to see promise, and to believe in the capacity of God to act. And in that, maybe this Christmas, God will act more decisively and boldly in your life. Amen.